Good afternoon, and be sure to subscribe to Brain Drain for more tall tales and fun facts about everything from airports to amusement parks to athletics. Today, we wholly milk a topic that has been skimmed for far too long. It's time to determine the winner for a balanced breakfast of champions on this great serial character episode of Brain Drain. Serial City. Before we honor who's the most cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, let's go to town and pay our respects. Prior to cartoon critters highlighting cardboard boxes, cereal was a bit more serious, and one city in particular deserves some credit. Battle Creek, Michigan played a large role in the development of the ready-to-eat cereal industry and the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In fact, one story cannot be told without the other. John Harvey Kellogg was the son of an Adventist factory owner in Battle Creek and was implored by his church to train in medicine at Bellevue Hospital Medical College in New York City. Kellogg went on to become a medical superintendent at the Western Health Reform Institute in Battle Creek, established in 1866 by the Adventists to offer natural remedies for illnesses. Many would travel far and wide to Kellogg Sanitation seeking wellness from a dietary world that often consisted of fried foods, meats, and coffee. Kellogg's Battle Creek Sanitarium was known for rest, fresh air, hydrotherapy, abstinence from alcohol, tobacco, and coffee, as well as a strict vegetarian diet. Within the vegetarian regimen, Kellogg experimented with granola and with wheat. These tests led to a light flaky product and a patent in the 1890s as he perfected and launched Corn Flakes. His brother, William K. Kellogg, bought the rights to Corn Flakes and set up the Kellogg Toasted Corn Flake Company. William Kellogg pivoted from healthy alternative cereal options and heavily advertised his signature on every package, that autograph being the company trademark. A patient of Kellogg's sanitarium was Charles W. Post. He loved the all-grain diet and began experimenting with grains upon his release, and created Grape Nuts in 1898, and Post's line of cereals are now household names today. Kellogg's and Post are what make Battle Creek, Michigan, Cereal City. Top 10 Cereal Characters from Kellogg's to Post to General Mills and more, here are the spokes characters we love to spend our mornings and nights with. Number 10, Busby, Honey Nut Cheerios. Good goes round for this anthropomorphic bee, first designed by Dean Yeagle. This irresistible buzzer did not have a name until 2000, when Christine Tong, a Coolidge, Texas fifth grader, won a national contest to name the mascot, dubbing him Busby. He's been happy, been healthy, and has been voiced by several actors in his career, including Jason Marsden, who voiced Thackeray Binks in Hocus Pocus, and Max Goof in a Goofy movie. Honey Nut Cheerios was the best-selling cereal of last year, so hey, must be the honey. Number 9. Count Chocula. Count Chocula. The best known of the General Mills Monster cereals was first produced in 1971. Count Chocula's companions include Frankenberry and Boo Berry, which are still seasonably made available. The Count's long lost friends are the Fruit Brute and the Yummy Mummy, which have been discontinued. George Karn is responsible for drawing both Count Chocula and the Trix Rabbit. Another fun fact is that Count Chocula's first name is Alfred. That's one unexpected first name. Ah, ah, ah. Number 8. Dig'em Frog. Honey Smacks. This spokes frog is a Kellogg's fan favorite. The amphibious face and ribbiting voice of Honey Smacks has been retired and brought back due to popularity multiple times. Honey Smacks was known as Sugar Smacks when it debuted in 1953 and had less charming mascots, including Cliffy the Clown and Smacksy the Seal. Diggum croaked supreme from 1972 to 1986 when Brass tried to replace him with Wally Bear, but people stood up for the once polywog and Diggum returned just one year later. Number 7. Trix Rabbit. Trix. Silly Rabbit, tricks are for kids. How? Ageist. Trix was the first fruit flavored cereal and was introduced in 1954. The iconic Trix Rabbit debuted in a 1959 commercial titled Rabbit and Carrot, which showed a rabbit who didn't want a carrot, but fruit flavored cereal. The Silly Rabbit appeared on the box for the first time in 1960. When he premiered on the box, it was as a paper mache rabbit, 1960, and then as a stuffed rabbit in 1961. Another box later, 1961, finally illustrated the Trix Rabbit as he was seen in the commercials. The Trix Rabbit wasn't even the first rabbit on the box, however. That happy honor belongs to Disney's Br'er Rabbit in 1956. Over his 60-year run, the Trix Rabbit has only tasted the fruit flavor of Trix five times. He managed to get cereal in commercials in 1968, 1976, 1980, 1987, and 1991. So here's to his pursuit of happiness. Number 6. Sonny the Cuckoo Bird. Cocoa Puffs. 
Everyone is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs when it comes to this energetic bird. Sonny the Cuckoo Bird was introduced to America's televisions in 1962. While Sonny always attempted to concentrate, he ended up coming across some connection to munchy, crunchy, chocolatey Cocoa Puffs. Sonny's name derives from the original format of the commercials, where Sonny would talk to his grandfather, aka Gramps. The proper names were never referenced, but Gramps and Sonny were a hit. When Gramps was no longer in the ad campaign, Sonny remained, and the name stuck. At the time, Chuck McCann voiced both Sonny and Gramps. Cuckoo indeed. Number 5. Toucan Sam – Fruit Loops Since 1963, Toucan Sam has flown high in the minds and hearts of cereal lovers. The Fruit Loops legend has been America's nosy neighbor since 1963. His uncanny ability to smell Fruit Loops from afar is impressive. He's known to melodically invite viewers to follow your nose, it always knows, occasionally followed by the flavor of fruit wherever it grows. In the late 2000s, he suggested that we just follow your nose for the fruity taste that shows. You're likely aware that Fruit Loops are six different colors but are all the same flavor. Many don't know that Fruit Loops was spelled correctly in 1959, but wasn't commercially successful until it became Fruit Loops, spelled incorrectly in 1963. Number 4. Lucky the Leprechaun – Lucky Charms The magically delicious Marbit's mascot is Lucky. His formal name is L.C. Leprechaun. In the early 1960s, he was also referred to as Sir Charms. After initial sales failed to meet expectations, General Mills sugarcoated the oats of Lucky Charms, and the cereal's success flew over the rainbow. In focus groups and market research, more brightly colored charms resulted in better sales than did that of dull or pastel colors. Lucky is fun, playful, and humans are always trying to steal from him. Between Lucky's heart, stars, horseshoes, clovers, red balloons, hourglasses, rainbows, and six new swirled moons, it's obvious why they're always after his Lucky Charms, or in Disney Plus's case, they're always after his Loki Charms. Number 3. Captain Crunch Captain Crunch while there's no governmental record of his naval history, Horatio Magellan Crunch is a hero. He was born on Crunch Island, off the coast of Ohio and in the Sea of Milk. His ship is called the Guppy. Cap'n Crunch cereal, as the slogan went, has corn for crunch, oats for punch, and it stays crunchy, even in milk. Pamela Lowe developed the original Cap'n Crunch flavor in 1963, recalling a recipe of brown sugar, butter, and a secret ingredient she dubbed want moreishness. The Boston Globe referred to Lowe as the mother of Cap'n Crunch in her obituary, which also credited her with helping create the flavors for Almond Joy, Heath Bars, and Mounds. But Cap'n Crunch deserves all the credit for navigating the high seas to cereal stardom. Quaker Oats, who manufactures this Napoleonic Crunch needed the Cap'n to make it happen. Number 2. Snap, Crackle, and Pop – Rice Krispies Since the 1930s, this elfish trio has helped Americans get on with their morning and out of their Great Depressions. Their onomatopoeia-based names are written on their heads in case you forget them. They are Snap, the redhead with the red bandana, he was the first to be featured. Crackle is the blonde middle child with the blue shirt and sleeping hat. Pop is the youngest and has the silliest of caps. In the 1950s, Pow was a fourth elf, more like a spaceman, who was briefly included in campaigns on the Howdy Doody show to promote the power of whole grain rice. Kellogg should dip into the ASMR cereal business with Rice Krispies and Rice Krispie treats, and should probably give Snap, Crackle, and Pop a marshmallowy raise. And number one, Tony the Tiger, Frosted Flakes. The greatest cereal mascot goes to Tony the Tiger. The Frosted Flakes feline started out in the 1950s as a less fit cat. His head was shaped like a football, and now he looks like he plays football. His once green eyes are now yellow. Fun facts about Tony the Tiger include Kellogg telling Italian GQ that Tony was half American and half Italian. Tony's family members all have variations of his name. There's his wife, Mrs. Tony, his son named Tony Jr., his daughter Antoinette, and his mother, Mama Tony. Tony had to beat out other mascot contenders for the Frosted Flakes job. The other nominees included Elmo the Elephant, Katie the Kangaroo, and Newt the New. In 1952, this cereal was originally known as Sugar Frosted Flakes, with the word sugar being dropped in 1983. No matter the decade, Tony has been going strong. He's great! Other fun fact, the creator of the Pillsbury Doughboy also created Tony the Tiger, which is something to laugh about. <laughs> so, what's your favorite cereal? What's your favorite cereal mascot? Are you mad that Sugar Bear from Golden Crisp isn't on this list? Or whatever that honeycomb thing is? Me want honeycomb, and for the next video to start. Thanks for watching Brain Drain, I'm Tom Polos, and don't forget to subscribe, it's a no-brainer.